Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to my channel. Today, we are going to see something that a quite a few people have requested over the time. It's one of the coolest effects you can find in most video games. But a lot of parts went into making this happen and I will try my best to show you all the steps it took to achieve something like this. And as always, you can find all these effects in my Patreons page. There are many different variations, but today we will focus on these basic explosions. Alright, let's see how we can do this. This explosion will be divided into three parts. First, we have the explosive smoke clouds. For this, we will convert a simple boring 3D sphere into a bright cloud using some nice shader tricks. Then, we will add random streaks to support the whole theme of the explosion and make it look more spiky and dangerous. And finally, we will coordinate all these effects together and add some extra details like a flare and some nice crack marks on the ground. Alright, let's start with the explosive clouds. Okay, so for this tutorial, I want to go ahead and start with a sphere. So let's go ahead and create a mesh instance 3D. Uh, sphere mesh. And I will start the explosion with this sphere. So in order to do that, let's go to geometry and let's create a new shader material. Create a new shader. And I want this to be a visual shader. Let's name it, for example, shader explosion cloud. Yeah. Cool. So now let's double click the explosion cloud shader. And here we can start creating the explosion shader. But first, this sphere doesn't look like a explosion cloud, right? So we want to modify this sphere so it looks like a cloud. And in order to do that, this time we will use a special section of this shader, which is the vertex section. And with this part of the shader, we can control all the points or all the vertices that composes this sphere. So here I have created a very simple PowerPoint presentation so let's say we have a sphere, which is composed by many, many little points, many vertices, and many faces. All these faces are pointing to a direction, which is the normal vector. So now let's say we have a simple texture like this, and we put this texture to the sphere. The idea is to use these white and black values of the texture to move all these vertices of the sphere. If it's white 1, move it a lot. And if it's black 0, don't move the points. So the idea is to do something similar to this in Godot so we can convert this sphere into a nice cloud. Okay, hopefully now it will be easy to understand what I am about to do over here. So let's see. I want to right click and look for vertex. So here we have all the vertices, all the points of the sphere. And I also want to create a normal so here we have all the normal vectors, all the di directions perpendicular to the, to the sphere. 
And what I want to do right now is to take all the points and I want to add the normal vector to these points. So as you can see, all the points moves where the normal vector is. Now let's add a black and white texture. Over here, I have a couple of textures that will be useful for this tutorial. I will leave the links in the description so you can use them as well. Let's put this into Goto. And let's grab some texture, maybe this one. Set this to color. Take the normal vector and multiply this vector with the texture. Oh, um, because this is a black and white texture, we don't need to use all the colors. We only need to use a single channel, maybe the red. Okay, this is crazy. This looks more like a cloud, right? But maybe this is too intense. So let's let's reduce the texture intensity a little bit. So let me multiply this texture with a value, maybe a value of 0 0.25. Okay, I like this. Uh, maybe we can also move this texture so the cloud looks a little bit more dynamic. Let's go ahead and create a UV panning node. With this, we can move the texture using this offset value. As you can see, we can slide this to control the position of the texture. But I want this to be automatically, so I will right click and create a time node and multiply this time with a vector 2. Uh, let's put a speed, for example, of 1 in the y axis. Maybe we can reduce the intensity to 0 0.2. Okay, I like this. In case you want to modify these values are quite easier, you can use parameters. So for example, I can right click and create a float parameter. I can name it um, cloud intensity. I can do the same for the velocity. I can go ahead and create a, uh, this will be a vector two parameter. And I can name it loud speed. And with these parameters over here, we now can close the shader editor. And if we go to the to the sphere, to the material, here we have the shader parameters. And here you can manually and easily adjust the cloud intensity, the speed. Now let's add some color to this smoke cloud. So let's go back to the shader editor. And this time let's go to the fragment option. So here we can start adding some colors. I want to use a texture for this. So let's pick a texture. Maybe we can use uh, this one. This looks like a cloudy texture. Set it to color. And also we want to use a color gradient. So right click and create a texture. Color gradient texture 1D. Let's pick a color. Maybe we can go from a, some kind of dark gray to a very bright brown, like so. Nice. Uh, if you click this little eye 
icon over here, you can see how it looks right now, the color radiant. So let's connect the, the texture into the color. Excellent. Now let's add a color for the explosion. I want to create a color, const color constant with a really strong, intense, reddish, orangey color. Maybe a red with a value of 1, 0 0.3 and 0 0.1. And let's connect this to the emission. Uh, not bad, but this needs to be much more intense. So let's grab this color and multiply this color with a float value of 20. So we can make this color 20 times much more intense. Okay, now let's add a texture to control this uh, reddish explosion intense color. Let's see, maybe we can use this texture. And I want to multiply this intense color with this black and white texture. I will use a very special node to control this explosion texture. I want to right click and look for smooth step. Okay. So what does this special smooth step function does? Let me show you. If you click this little icon, you can see the result. So this is the original texture and this is the new texture. So look what happened if we move this edge value. You can see how this disappear eventually just by moving this value. So we can right click and create a float parameter. Let's name it explosion amount and we can set this in a range between 0 and 1 this explosion amount parameter so now if we close the shader and we go to the sphere we now have this explosion amount over here and if we slide it you can see how it make this disappear which is really cool but I don't want, I don't really like this texture too much. Maybe, maybe we can use a different texture. Maybe, uh, let me delete this. And, and oh, I don't like these textures. Uh, you know what? Let's create a new texture. Let's right click and look for a texture 2D. Set it to color, and this will be a new noise texture. We need to configure this, so let's click this. Here we can create a new noise. And we can modify this to look like as we want. I will set this to cellular noise. Reduce this value a little bit. And let's play with these options. Okay, this is interesting. Uh, I also want this texture to be repetitive, so I want to check this option and increase it. Let's see how it looks. Okay, I like this. Let's see. Let's move this slider, the explosion amount, to see how it changes. Oh, really nice. I like this. 
maybe we can control all of these with, with some parameters. Maybe we can right click and convert this color to a parameter. Let's name it uh, explosion color. So now we can also control the color over here, which is really nice. Finally, let's add some way for this cloud to disappear. So let's go back to the shader graph. Maybe we can organize this a little bit. I will create a frame. This will be the dark base color. And another frame for this. This is a good practice to keep everything organized. Let's name this Emissive Bright Color. Okay, we will need a texture. So let's use this one. Set it to color and connect it to the alpha channel. With this texture, we can control the transparency of the cloud. And I will use the exact same technique we use for the emission. I will go ahead and create a smooth step node to control the texture. So I also need a parameter to control this edge value. So right click and create a slow parameter. Let's name it disappear cloud. And this will be in a range between zero and one. And in order to keep everything organized, I will create a frame cloud dissolver. Okay, the shader is now completed. We can close this. And if we go to the sphere mesh in the material, now we can control the explosion, the emission explosion, and we can also make the cloud disappear. So with this, we can create an explosion. First, we have a bunch of clouds with uh, this really intense color. Then it turns off into a smoke. And finally, the smoke disappears. Okay, we have this explosion cloud, but we will need a lot of clouds. So let's move this over here. And I will go ahead and create a GPU particle system. And in order for this particle to work, I need to go ahead and create a new particle process material. And in draw passes, I will select a sphere mesh. Okay, we have a lot of spheres falling down. This is because of the gravity. So let's go to the particle process material in accelerations and set the gravity to zero. Also, let's go to spawn, position, select a sphere. So I want these particles to spawn into a random sphere position with a radius of 0.2. Also, let's give it some velocity. So let's go to animated velocity, radial velocity, and let's give it a random velocity between 6.5 and 7.5. Now let's go to time, set the FPS to 60 FPS, and set the explosiveness to 0.8 and the lifetime to 0 0.6. Here we go. Let's go back to the velocity and in radial velocity, I want to create a new curve. So it starts very fast, like an explosion, and then go slow. Maybe this is too small. So let's go to display. Let's go to scale and set a random scale between 1.7 and 1.8. 
Okay. Also, let's create a new curve to control this scale. So I want these particles to start very small, very, very small, like so, and then go big, really fast. Cool. Yeah, this looks better. Okay, here we have a lot of spheres. Now we only need to add the explosion material shader we have created. So let's go back to the first cloud we have created. And I want to save this material. Right click and save as. Let's name it material explosive cloud. Save. So now I can go to the particle system into geometry. And over here, I can assign this new explosion material. Okay, this is really cool. Also, we can control these parameters over here. It will be perfect if we can automatically control these values depending on the particle lifetime. Unfortunately, there is no, there is no uh, special node to take the particle lifetime, but we can do a little trick. Instead of using this uh, disappear cloud value, I will delete this and I will pick the color of the particle system. And I will use the transparency or the alpha value of the particle to control this disappear value. And I will do the same for the explosion amount. I will delete this and replace it for the particle color. And I will grab the red value of the particle color. And I will show you the reason why in a moment. So if I close this and go to the particle system, here we can assign a color and an alpha value for the particle, which is connected to the emission value. So if we go ahead and create an alpha curve, We can tell this alpha value to start in zero and then goes to one, so it disappear. But this is too fast. I want these particles to be opaque for a moment and then it can disappear. So with this alpha value, we can control the disappear over here of the shader. And this is really cool. Let's do the same for the emission color. Let's go to, if we go to the color and we move this value, we can control now the emission value moving the red slider. And we can do this automatically using the color ramp gradient. Let's modify this a little bit. So I want the emission uh, explosiveness to be zero for a couple of seconds and then to be one over here. So there we go. We have this nice uh, explosion. There is one more thing I would like to modify for this shader. As you can see, it looks uh, quite ugly when it touches floor because we can see the edges of the clouds. So in order to fix this, let's go to the transparency. And I want to multiply this value with a proximity fade. So now you can see a better transition in the edges of the clouds. All right, the explosive clouds are done. Now let's go ahead and add the streaks effect. Okay, let's create the streaks. Uh, but first I will hide this explosion effect for now. 
so we don't get distracted. And I will go ahead and create a GPU particle system. In order for this particle to work, we need to create a new particle process material and assign a mesh. This time we will use a new quad mesh. So here we have a lot of quad meshes falling down and this is because of the gravity. So let's go to the particle process material and set the gravity to zero. Okay, uh, now I would like this plain mesh to be a little bit more stretchy. So let's set a size of 0 0.25 and one, like so. And also I want to set the pivot point to 0 0.4 in the Y axis. Go to spawn, velocity, and I want this velocity to be in the Y axis with a spread of 90 degrees and with a random value between 0 0.5 and 1. Go to particle flex and enable aligned Y. Excellent. Maybe we can increase the size a little bit. So let's go to display scale. And I want this to have a random scale between five and seven for the explosion. Also, I want these particles to start small and then go big. So let's create a curve. And once again, I want these particles to start small and then go big really fast. Let's move up and set the explosiveness to 0 0.9. Let's give it some randomness. Set the FPS to 60 and maybe let's set a time of 0 0.4. Okay, this looks uh, quite awful for now, but don't worry. This will look much better with a nice texture, but this time we will create a very particular texture for this effect. So we will need to go to a painting software. You can use Photoshop or the paint or GIMP or any software you want. This time I will use Krita because it's free and it's really easy to use. Let's create a new image. I will use this resolution. Let's pick the bucket tool and fill the background with a black color. Create a new layer and using the line tool, I will split the image into four parts. Now let's have some fun. Pick the brush and select a white color. And let's go ahead and paint four different streaks, one on each part. I am also using the eraser tool to delete some parts and make it look more dynamic. That's it. There is something really important we need to remember. Let's say this complete image is 100%. So if we divide it into four parts, then each part is 25% size. This is important because we will use some tricks to divide this texture later on. So please remember each part is about 25% of the size. Cool. Let's delete the guidelines. We don't need this anymore. Finally, let's go to filter and add some motion blur. So it looks like the particles are moving. Let's save this. I will name it texture underscore for streaks. 
Okay, so we are back in Godot. So let's import our special texture. And now let's go to the streaks. And let's create a new shader material. Create a new shader. Select visual shader. And this will be the shader streak. Okay, let's open the shader. And I want to do some changes to this shader. So let's go to modes and set the cool mode to be disabled. So we can see both sides of the planes. Also, let's go to Flex and set this to Unshaded. Now, let's pick our special texture. And let's connect this into the transparency. So, as you can see, this is using the full texture. And this is a special texture. So, I want to divide this texture into four different parts to make it look more interesting. So how do how, how can we divide this into four parts? In order to do that, I will take the UV. By default, this is using the full texture. So I want to change this. I want to multiply add something to this value. So if I multiply the horizontal size instead of using 100%, I will use 0.25%. Uh, so as you can see, it's now using only one image. It's using the, the first image of the texture. Uh, but if we add some value, for example, if we add 0 0.25, now we have the second image. If we add 0 0.5, now we have the other Im the 50% of the image, which is this texture. So yeah, this is what we want. But here I will need to use a random value to control this offset. In order to do that, we have a special node, which is the random range. And this will give you a random value between 0 and 1. But we have a problem. Uh, this only works based on a seed or a different position. So this is useful, for example, for the grass or something. But this is not good for these particles because they are all in the same place. So this is not what we want. Instead of that, I will go ahead and do a secret technique. I will grab the color of the particle. So as you can see, if I go to the particle system, if I go to color curves, here I can give any color I want to the particle. But this time I will not use this. This time I will give it some hue variation. Let's give it a full variation. We are having these random colors on each streak. And this is perfect. Here we are ha having some randomness. But instead of using the, the full color, we can only use a single channel, maybe the red channel. So now we are having a random value on each streak between 0 and 1, between black and white. So this is exactly what we need. Let's use this to give some randomness to, to the texture. But this gives us a, a value between 0 and 1. So I need to do some changes to this. So right click and let's create a new curve texture. 
and let's create a new curve and I will convert this value that goes between 0 and 1 to any value that goes between 0 to a 0 0.5 value to a 0 0.25 to a 0 0.75 so we can use this to control this x value over here of the texture uh, but this use one single value so we need to vector to compose so pick the x value and apply it over here so now each streak looks different it's a random value based on this special texture this adds some interesting variation to this effect now let's add some color to this effect so let's right click and create a color parameter and let's name it for example streaks color so now if we go to the particle system to the material, here we have the value for a streaks color. And let's give it a nice color, maybe a color with a really strong raw value of 4, 0 0.8, and 0 0.2. There is one more thing I would like to add to this effect. So let's go to the shader editor and I want this effect to vanish like the explosion so I will use another texture for that let's grab um, maybe this texture and I will use this texture as we did before for the explosion so I will create a smooth step So as you can see, using this function, we can control the edge to make this texture like disappear over the time. Um, but in order to do this, we need to control this value over here. So I will use the alpha channel of the particle to control this. And we need to control the texture with this so we need so let's multiply the special texture with this vanishing texture and okay it disappears it's okay let's go to the particles and let's go to the alpha curve and let's create a new curve So here we can control the value of the disappearing effect. I want this value to start in zero and then disappear at the end, like so. Oh yeah, this looks really nice. Maybe I want this to go faster, so I will increase this curve. Okay. Let's see how it looks with the explosion. And let's move these streaks over here. The explosion is almost completed. We only need to add some extra details and coordinate everything together. Let's organize this a little bit. So this is the VFX smoke balls and this is the VFX streaks and maybe we can go ahead and create a node 3D and put all this here and name this um, VFX explosion this is a good practice in order to keep everything organized also uh, one more thing as you can see, the streaks are viewing in front of the smokes. So I will go to the tricks effect 
and into the material I will give it a render priority of minus one so it renders behind the smokes let's coordinate these effects together so I will go ahead and create a new animation player create a new animation I only want these effects to play once so enable one shot here and here and in the animation player I want these smoke balls to play at the beginning and then just before that over here I want to play the streaks effect let's see how it looks excellent now everything is synchronized but we can improve this so in order to do that I will go ahead and create a light 3D let's increase the range and the energy to 20 and set a yellowish reddish color like so so I want this uh, light to be really intense to have a energy of 20 at the beginning of the animation and then over here I will set the energy to zero nice now we have a nice light here but we can improve this even more so I will add a flare so I, for that I will create a GPU particle 3D use a uh, quad mesh create a particle process material now we have a lot of plane meshes falling down this is because of the gravity so let's go to accelerations and set the gravity to zero I only need one plane so let's set the amount to one set the time to 0 0.5 so it goes faster FPS to 60 let's give it a full explosiveness to one let's go to display scale and increase the scale to 12 also let's create a new curve so I want this flare to be really big at the beginning and then go small really fast now let's go to the geometry let's create a new standard material set the shading mode to unshaded and set the blend mode to add now let's go to albedo and here I want to use an image of a really flashbang texture maybe this one give it some color a red color with a raw value of 2 0 0.6 and 0 0.3 go to the material and enable particle billboard and enable proximity fade so now the flash is always following the camera direction let's name this flare this is not necessary but for the really big explosions like this it's important to have a mark on the floor so this is easy to do you only need to create a decal give it a nice texture like this I also have a emission texture and let's set a size of 5 0 0.5 and 5 we can give it a nice reddish orangey color and we can control these values to make it more bright or make it disappear let's coordinate everything with the animation I want these cracks to be really bright at the beginning and then set the brightness to zero let's increase the duration of this animation to two seconds so I have extra seconds to make these cracks disappear okay let's see how it looks 
Okay, this is great. You can also add a sound effect over here or make the camera shake when it plays this animation. You can add some debris, shock waves, sparks. The possibilities are a lot, but at least now you have all the fundamentals done and you can create your own custom explosions. And that's it guys, thank you for watching and I hope that this video helps you to learn something new today and I hope to see you in the next video.